my hope for the future is that whatever happens, happens for the benefit of the people of Alaska. And tonight, that is how so many Alaskans are now remembering the man who was the last surviving delegate of the Alaska Constitutional Convention. Vic Fisher passed away last night at the age of 99. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, Vic Fisher's loved ones are planning a November memorial service for the Alaska Constitutional Pioneer. Fisher's political philosophy in helping shape statehood was one deeply formed through a painful personal history. And, uh, that was in 1950, and uh, I have grown up with Alaska ever since. With big dreams since arriving in Alaska, Vic Fisher was fed up knowing that in the territory, he could not cast presidential or Senate votes, like when he was a college student in the lower 48. And uh, all of a sudden, I was no longer a full-fledged citizen because Alaska was a territory and not a state. During one of his last interviews last year at 98 years old, and I don't know how long I will last, but so far, so good. He still vividly recalled being the last surviving Constitutional Convention delegate, ready in the 1950s to show proof to Congress and the country that Alaskans have what it takes. We in Alaska were smart enough and to write a good constitution and demonstrate that we're ready for statehood. A worldview partially shaped where he grew up as a Jewish person. In Germany, where his dad was an American journalist, the family moving to his Ukrainian mom's native Russia when the Nazis came to power. During the Stalin uh, horrors, when people were being arrested, left and right and executed. That would lead Fisher to move to America in 1939. Within two years after Pearl Harbor was attacked, the Army veteran served three years during World War II. But books made him dream of being an Alaska city planner. After graduating from the University of Wisconsin and then MIT, he arrived in Anchorage in 1950, quickly becoming involved in public policy. I was convinced that we've got to do something. And one of the things I did after I came to Alaska, I ran for the territorial legislature. Remembering people killed under Nazi and Soviet control. As Fisher grew into an Alaskan political force, he committed himself and wanted his legacy known for co-sponsoring the law abolishing Alaska's death penalty in 1955. And I just didn't, didn't, couldn't stand that happening in, in Alaska. And in that same do something spirit, Fisher remained forever committed to never allowing another constitutional convention, wanting ordinary Alaskans, not bitterly divided politicians or special interests, defining the state's future. My hope for the future is that whatever happens, happens for the benefit of the people of Alaska. And through it all, there was art and his love for his wife. I'm in a wonderful marriage with Jane. She takes real good care of me. I do my best with her. <laughs> and we're very happy. It's a good life. We're blessed that way. A blessed life, a direction like the state, Vic Fisher always seemed focused north toward making his community better. To overcome the evils that I have seen and to strengthen the positive things that a human being can be. From Vic Fisher, in his own words, to our team coverage, continue with Steve Kirch. Steve, who talked to Fisher's widow and biographer about how they're remembering him today. Steve. 
Maria, Fisher's widow, Jane Ingvik, who was his wife for more than 40 years, said look no further than a painting he took up later in his life to see the symbolism in the legacy Alaska meant to him. He likes red. <laughs> so when, uh, when Vic was uh, 80, he picked up a paintbrush. For nearly the last two decades, Vic Fisher's widow, Jing Engvik, showed me how he used painting to honor the state he loved so much, even with tremors in his hands. He was just putting color on and letting the tremor sort of decide what was going to happen to the to their colors. These Alaska pictures, she feels, are symbolic in many ways of the land she says he used his personal history with Nazi Germany and Stalin's Soviet Union to work with other framers during the Constitutional Convention for Statehood for Alaska. He didn't stand bullies. He didn't like uh, people who were in any way, he abhorred uh, people who were harming others because they were bigger, stronger, meaner. That stuck with him later in life. As Engvik says, Fisher, who spoke three languages, English, German, and Russian, advocated for public education funding, leading him to initiate a failed recall attempt of Governor Mike Dunleavy. And Vic was just outraged that he had gutted education in an effort to have enough money to be able to pay a permanent fund dividend and that that was wrong. He was so adored by so many people. And even in his final days, people were coming to pay their respects and, and say goodbye. Charles Wolforth, who wrote a book with Fisher, thinks Fisher will be remembered as a champion of freedom and someone who stood up for the little guy. But I think his biggest legacy is the impact he made on people because he, he was truly a people person. And he always wanted to help others, and he always wanted to pull them along. As she remembers her late husband today, Ainvik says she thinks all Alaskans can use his art to inspire how they live their lives. We have to go and do something new that is way outside our comfort zone. Even though Fisher spent months in hospice care, his wife said he enjoyed recently watching a performance of Hamilton, noting some similarities of being in the room as statehood happened. Mike?